Hello ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome to the third episode of the Untold Journey podcast series. The Untold Journey podcast series is proudly brought to you by the All Africa Conference of Churches and I am your host Nyabul Pasca Alfred. Uh, today on our on the third episode we have we are having the the a peace advocate and humanitarian advocate as well and he's called Bishop Nyaboho all the way from Burundi. Bishop Nyaboho is a regional vice president of the All Africa Conference of Churches for the Central African region and today we are so honored to have you today uh, the Bishop Nyaboho. Thank you for for accepting to be part of this of this journey and we are so proud today to be documenting your journey. How are you? Uh, thank you for inviting me to come and share my experience in peace uh, building in the Great Lakes region and the continent of Africa. I'm a Burundian by birth and I'm a Burundian by citizenship. Uh, I was born in Burundi some years back, 1955, and I grew up in Burundi. I did my primary school education in Burundi, my secondary school education in Burundi still, until I went to do my theoretical studies in Kenya, Kenya Highlands Bible College, Rift Valley. Then I moved to Asbury University College in Kentucky, USA. And then I came back to Kenya. I graduated with a bachelor degree in theolo systematic theology. Then I went back to serve my Anglican church in Burundi. First of all, as a Bible teacher in a vernacular Bible school of our diocese and second as a development officer of Matana Diocese uh, until 1992-93. Uh, I want to stop by here because uh, if I start by 1994, it will be another context. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Bishop Nyaboho. And it's good to have you in, in, in this world with us. And, um, in 1994, uh, you participated in the church leaders meeting in Naivasha to address uh, the, the prevailing crisis in the Great Lakes region. If you can just take us through what was the crisis about uh, in 1994 that we need to be aware of right now. And also if you, get, if you, can, uh, if you can tell us how, how, how you participated and what was your role in, that, um, in those crises. In order to get the true knowledge of the context of 1994, let me take you back to 1972. In Burundi, there was a civil war and uh, there were so many people who were massacred uh, from mainly the ma majority group, which is the Hutu groups, which I belong to. Uh, I was that time in the secondary school. Then uh, from that time, I noticed the suffering of, of the people uh, to the point that I started thinking of uh, being a champion of peacemaking. And I said, well, uh, when I grew up, I don't want to, uh, to see or to hear or to witness uh, such killings. And uh, later on, in 1990, as you know, there was a wind of democracy throughout the continent. Mm -hmm. And uh, Burundi, which has known only uh, military governance through coup d'etats, in 1990 they have uh, accepted the multi-party system of governance, leading to the election, democratic elections of 1993. Uh, the civilian uh, candidate from the majority Hutu group won elections. Then the military were not happy with this new uh, shift of government. Mm -hmm. At 102 days later in office, the president was brutally killed with his cabinet ministers, many district commissioners, uh, the president of the Senate, the president of the parliament, it was a total political anarchy in Burundi. And uh, in the countryside, uh, the people who had elected that president from their group got angry and started killing uh, the other group, the Tutsis, burning their houses. And uh, it, was, it was a total anarchy. 
Later on, the military came in and revenged, massacring people, killing people. And the, from that time, we had uh, thousands and thousands internally displaced people. Uh, that's how uh, the All Africa Conference of Churches decided in uh, April 1994 to invite a group of church leaders from Burundi to come to Naivasha for a consultation, just to respond to the question, what are you doing to restore peace in Burundi? Or what can we do? How can we assist you, accompany you? Mm -hmm. Well, I was selected as a young priest, uh, cause uh, for four years I was outside the country. I went to, back to the country in February, 1992. So it was only two years. I was still a young priest who could not sit near these senior pastors, senior priests, senior bishops. When I was selected, I was astonished. And I said, oh, how did they remember me? So I came with them to Naivasha. We had a very nice meeting. And the people in Naivasha Hotel was asking, why, why, are, why are you here for? And he said, well, we have a consultation We're from Burundi. And they asked us a very funny question. Uh, do you have a monk in our in our meetings? Do you have uh, uh, Tutsis and the Hutus? We said, yes. And they asked, why are not you killing one another? Right. <laughs> and we said, <laughs> so we have come for a retreat and uh, just seek the guidance of God, how we can help our people who are dying, who are being killed, who are hungry, who are naked, who are, who are homeless. Mm -hmm. And uh, we said, if you have an advice you can provide to us, uh, we are, you are welcome. So they said, okay, the way you are living together, smiling, sharing uh, food and a glass of water and beer in this hotel, go back and do the same. That time, the Great Lakes region was in a total crisis because in Burundi there was a civil war and people were just leaving Burundi and running to Rwanda and either to Rwanda or to Congo, DRC Congo, the former Zaire. Mm -hmm. Then from 6 April 1994, there was uh, with the killing of uh, the two presidents, the president of Rwanda and the president of Burundi uh, at uh, Kigali International Airport, there was a uh, genocide erupting in Rwanda. So the, the Hutus of Rwanda had to run to Burundi or to Congo, to, to, to Zaire. So there was a move, Burundi going to Rwanda. Rwanda is going to Burundi, going to DRC Congo. You see, you see the, 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 the wind. Mm. Then we lived in a total crisis. So in Burundi, there were so many internally displaced people camps. And uh, the Anglican Church of Burundi made an appeal uh, to via the Anglican Church of Canada with uh, Archbishop Mike Pierce. He made an appeal to the Anglican community and to the other well-wishers. So we got funds and uh, to pro you know to purchase items, food and non-food items to those people because I was uh, one of the a small group which could drive. So I was appointed as a, as a driver, as a distributor of the humanitarian assistance. I have been here and there in the country visiting the displaced people, you know, praying with them and, uh, you know, listening to their grief. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was a sad, they could, you know, record sad stories of the experiences they have gone through. I could notice also that uh, for those who didn't have either schools uh, to shelter them, they could just make the camp in the churches. Mm -hmm. So from Monday to Saturday, they were in the churches. On a Sunday, they could go out for a church worship. <laughs> and after the church worship, they could come back. What I advised in some of the churches that I visited, I said, well, even if you stay here as couples, please, please avoid 
sex in the church. It can be done somewhere else, not in the church. You, you can see how, how serious I was. And some, some, some older men laughed and say, oh, you know, pastor, we can't do that. Others were just saying, do you think this is a pleasure for us as we live this life? You can see how, you know, sorrow, how deeply they were saddened. So that's how I came to Naivasha in that uh, senior church leaders meeting. And I was like a small voice, but influencing the senior bishops and priests just to, you know, to, to, to approach the government in transition, uh, just to, to stop the killings and to stop the civil war. Right. Oh, wow. Uh, thank you very much, Bishop Nyaboho. Something that has struck me from what you've said is the fact that you came from uh, the majority of the Hutu that were, were massacred in the country. You still took that up as part of uh, as part of the committee or the church leaders to come and dialogue and converse about the situation in Burundi. Why do you think uh, you were not influenced? Because if it was someone else, we've seen in, in most contexts where church leaders tend to uh, to ally with their different ethnic groups and feel like, no, this is this is what is this is my community and I have to go with what my community need. Uh, but uh, to your own values, you went against that. Why do you think um, you did not ally with your with your with your with your community, especially the majority that were they were they were massacred? You know the goodness of Burundi is that uh, these two groups they live together in the same village. Right. Yes, it happened that uh, in some, in some area, some region, mm -hmm. maybe the Tutsis are more than the Hutus or vice versa, but uh, uh, generally both live together. Right. So on my village, I grew up with the, the Tutsis and also my, you know, at my wedding, imagine my best man was a Tutsi. <laughs> 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 and oh, I wow. said, well, that he was a very good friend of mine. That was a and good I, brotherhood. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I didn't have any problem with those people. Even in Matana, when I was working, which is a majority area of the Tutsis, I was quite acquainted to, 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 to them. Uh, and also using my talents, uh, you know, I was, I used to play music. I was, mm -hmm. I used to, you know, to play soccer, football, basketball. So, you know, we had some farms with them so i didn't have any 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 problem with them so when i i, I saw the sufferings you are going through you know it has touched my heart i kept saying why god have you accepted this to happen to us because if i remember what happened in 1972 where there was uh, no human assistance to the suffering people the bereaved people in 1994, it has a, a new image because humanitarian assistance have come in. Mm -hmm. Then I said, well, this is not the best way of living. What we need is to love one another, to help one another, so that we can be a witness to the future generation. And uh, maybe one day we should sing a slogan saying, never, never, never this in this country. Right. Thank you very much. Um, from all that you've told us, Bishop Nyaboho, um, if, if you try to look back into the years, the over, over 20 or over 30 years that you've been working in Burundi and in the Great Lakes region, um, are you proud of, of all the things that you've, been, you've achieved, in, especially in, in, in intervening in the conflicts, in the situations, the crisis, the humanitarian crisis in the country, the massacre of Hutus, and also at some point they, that brought all the differences between the Hutu and the Tutsi, and all that had, had happened, and your involvement in it, uh, are you proud of, of what you have achieved until uh, today, when you look back? Of course, of course. <laughs> Definitely. As a little person that I am, I'm proud of my achievements. One. Mm -hmm. I have been a witness uh, to my community and to, to the surrounding mm -hmm. uh, area, region. 
I want to let you even today that my driver is a Tutsi. Is a Tutsi, is from the Tutsi tribe. And uh, as I, tell, I told you, I didn't have any major problems with them. And also that uh, the local the, the communities live together. It's only this has come as a political issue from the top. Right. Just a group of people uh, uh, paralyzing the life of a country, mm -hmm. mainly the military. Otherwise, uh, the Tutsis and the Hutus have been living together according to the history of Burundi. Uh, though the Belgians, when they came in to colonize our country in 1926, they, they removed all the Hutus from power, uh, leaving only the Tutsis to be the nobles, the chief, sub-chiefs. Uh, but uh, these two communities have been living together, helping one another. So uh, my little contributions, my witness, different meetings I have attended, my sermons, my preaching, uh, have been a contribution towards peace building. And I'm proud, I'm happy that uh, today I see a lot of changes in our society. And uh, I'm proud of that. Great. And we are proud of your achievements too from this side. We are, we are proud and very uh, unwilling to carry on your button and uh, uh, see how we can move forward with all the wisdom that you've shared with us. Um, what do you think according to you? Uh, you I, I'm glad that you say that the situation right now in Burundi is stable right from all the, the crisis that happened from 1994 or before 1994. But as you look back right now and also proud of your achievements and your involvement in all of, in all of this crisis, what do you think needs to be done better? Because the aspect of sustainable peace here is where we've not we have not captured captured very well as peace advocates or peace uh, peacemakers uh, globally or continentally. Um, what, according to you, from your wisdom, uh, should be should be done to ensure that there is a just and peaceful society? First of all, we want to uh, recognize the achievements of uh, former President Julius Nyerere of Tanzania, former President of South Africa Nelson Mandela the way they have uh, shared the negotiations between uh, the political parties of Burundi mm -hmm. and the agreement, the peace process agreement signed in Arusha in 2000. Mm -hmm. From that time onwards, the political parties, the politicians have come together to discuss the matters, political matters related to the society of Burundi. Right. And when uh, uh, Nelson Mandela said, we cannot continue unless we see the church leaders coming to these negotiations. Some politicians of Burundi said, no, 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 Mr. President, let those uh, church leaders, they will come to bless what they have agreed on. Mandela said, no, no, no. If the churches were, have not raised their voices, Mandela should be again in prison. So it was a good model. Then from that time onwards, we have had many opportunities as church leaders to meet the politicians and to challenge them and say, please, we have started building peace in Burundi. Don't destroy our peace again. We are speaking with God's voice, a prophetic voice. We don't want this country of Burundi to go back to where it has been. And we don't want to experience the conflicts of each decade there is a coup d'etat, each decade there is a conflict, each decade there are massacres and killings. We don't want that anymore. Mm -hmm. So from 2005, we have had uh, democratic institutions until 2015, right. when there was a contested third term of President uh, Peter Nkurunziza. Those who were outside the constitution of Burundi could say, well, he had to leave, he had to go. But for those who managed to read and interpret the constitution, he had the right for a third term. The first time was a post-conflict 
He was not elected by the people, but in 2010, 2015, he was elected. So there were another attempt coup d'etat in 2015, but uh, we praise the Lord that has failed. Now, politicians and church leaders, they have a platform of meeting and discussing only issues related to, to peace. We have also church leaders who have been in national commissions, including the Commission of Truth and Reconciliation, Commission of Electoral Commissions. I am one of them. I have been a provincial vice chair in 2010 and uh, a president of electoral commission in my district in 2015. And also, uh, when we have privileges to, you know, we have uh, influenced uh, the constitutional committee to include the first article of the constitution of Burundi says that Burundi is a country which has put God as a priority in everything we do. So in every meeting, in the offices, in the morning, people have to pray before they start their daily businesses. Even if we have a big gathering in stadiums, they invite church leaders to pray. I was invited to pray when the, the president was swearing in two years ago. It was a privilege. And whenever he, he, he he's touring the country and he meets me, he says, oh, even Bishop Nyaboho is here. You know, when I call like president by name, you feel happy and proud. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. And I'll proudly say, oh, I know Bishop Nyaboho also. <laughs> Oh, wow. Thank you very much, Bishop Nyaboho. You have, uh, you have a huge experience in your years of work. Your journey is amazing. And I know that if we start talking about everything in details, it will take the whole day. Um, how, would you want to be, how would you want to be remembered? When today God say, Nyaboho, your, your time on earth is done. <laughs> I want to be remembered as a person who achieved what only you are supposed to do. Right. I was supposed to be a peacemaker. Mm. I was supposed to be a witness to a social well-being of my communities. I want to be remembered as a person who wished that every people should live in harmony with one another. I want to be remembered as a servant of God and a servant of my country. Right. Indeed, what you were only what you were supposed to do. We will remember you for all of that because it's not just about remembering, it's about the things you've also done. And clearly everything that you've said is everything that your, your entire journey from your narration right now is what we have witnessed. Thank you very much, Bishop Nyaboho. We are truly, truly honored to go through and understand verbally hear from you of your journey from the work that you've been doing in the Great Lakes region, especially in your motherland, which is uh, Burundi. Burundi, thank yes. You. Thank, uh, you. thank you very much for inviting me. Sure, sure, definitely. Well, there you have it, dear viewers. Thank you for, being, uh, for staying tuned until the end of this episode. Until next time, uh, our guest today once again is Bishop uh, Nyaboho Martin Blaze. He usually says that it's not Nyaboth. He usually says, <laughs> not, not considering that it's my name, it's Nyaboho Martin Blaze. Thank you. Thank you for staying tuned. And before you go, please make sure that you click on the subscribe button and stay connected to the upcoming episodes in the near future. Thank you very much and have a blessed day.